Adam Gustafson is a multi-talented artist, author, and educator from West Orange, New Jersey. After graduating with a BFA in illustration from Rowan University, he continued his art education at the School of Visual Arts. Gustafson currently works as both a freelance artist and a professor. He's worked at many schools across the tri-state area, including his alma mater, Rowan University. He and his wife, Denise, own and operate the Renaissance Art Studio in Milburn, New Jersey, where he offers one-on-one -on -one art classes to his community. Gustafson's work has appeared in over 30 children's books, including one himself. His oil paint illustrations are intricately detailed, and Gustafson puts much effort and research into all of his work. He treats his audience of four to nine-year-olds as the smartest people to walk the earth. Hi, welcome to Garden State of the Arts. Our guest today is Adam Gustafson. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. So being an artist, tell us what inspired you to start creating art, and how long have you been creating art? I've probably been creating art since about the time I was created, uh, or at least you know, there are scribbles at crawling height around my parents' house that would be a testament to that. But I, I grew up in a really creative family. Uh, my brothers and I just drew together the way most kids would play catch. Uh, it was just how we played. It was so much of how we communicated. It was what we talked about. Your childhood has had quite an inspiration or impact on the way that you create art today, I see. With this experience that you have with creating art, what would you say has inspired you to pursue a career in this? I think it was just sort of assumed that was what I was going to do. I was almost late to getting that memo. Um, but I think for anyone outside, it was obvious that when I was interested in something, it manifested most in drawings. You know, if we would go back to that point in my childhood where I wanted to be a cowboy, I didn't have a real interest in riding a horse. I drew a lot of horses. Um, and, and that sort of followed me through life that when I was interested in something, it, it found its way into, into pictures more than experience. Um, and so as I got into high school, it, it became obvious uh, that, that it, was, it was the drawing that was primary for me, That's, that subject matter was almost secondary, that you know, it was just sort of fodder for things to make pictures out of. With this uh, passion that you have for creating art, what led you to specifically create illustrations for children books? That was a lot of the work that I wound up getting when I started off in earnest being an illustrator. I did some work in magazines, but there's something about the way I work, the kind of people I draw, the way I think and solve problems that found itself most at home in, in children's books, which was fine with me. I, I, I grew up uh, with you know, bedtime stories being a large part of my family culture. You know, my, uh, my mom was an artist and chose books that had good illustrations above anything else. It was kind of a natural fit for me. It was, um, uh, but, but more than anything, it was, it was the kind of work that suited how I thought. And, and it, it, it also allows, uh, allows one to you spend say six months with a subject, you know, really you know, draw the same characters over and over and over again. So there's a specific skill set to it to suited me. That's amazing. So you've clearly had a lot of experience with creating these children's books based off of your childhood yourself. And I understand that you've actually written your own children's book. Could you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to do that? Uh, yeah, so The Froggies Do Not Want to Sleep, uh, my, my first book as an author, is it's sort of an anti-bedtime story. Uh, I, around the time I started thinking about it and working on it, uh, I think I came across a bunch of social media posts by parents who were sort of complaining about bedtime, um, complaining about having to read the same story over and over again, about their children getting wound up instead of falling asleep, um, and that it was kind of annoying, and weren't these books supposed to put your children to sleep? And I thought, no, no, that's, that's not actually the point. The point is this bonding and that the book is this thing that puts you and your child in the same experience together. It's supposed to be fun. You do it at the end of the day, and that's why children fall asleep, because it's the end of the day. But the book isn't there to hypnotize them, I and it's not, it's not a punishment. 
uh, it should be something that you look forward to. Uh, so I wrote a book specifically that was not supposed to put children to sleep. It was supposed to wind them up. But at the same time, it was, it was thoughts I have about play, too, that, um, that you know, when, if, if a child plays dress up, that's a very real thing. But whatever you've dressed as becomes this launch pad for a series of imaginings that kind of build vertically, I, if you will. Uh, and, and, you know, possibly get more and more out of hand until someone eventually tells you it's time for bed. You're really inspiring the creativity with your art, with your art and or your work with your children's books within breaking the stigma of bedtime stories, so to say. So you've mentioned also that you're currently working on your second self-authored book. So we actually have some footage from our producers here about you working on this book. Could you tell us a little bit about the inspiration and the process behind creating, illustrating, and writing it? Uh, yeah, so the, the book I'm working on now is called uh, The Aliens Are Not Ready to Go Home. Uh, it's about the string of excuses we, we give for not leaving playdates and family parties and, and things like that. So the whole thing starts, starts with a manuscript, um, with writing a story. And in this case, it's, it's a sort of a, a list um, created as, a, uh, as, as, as an unreliable narrator um, so that as, as these reasons for not being ready to go home go on, the book itself details an alien invasion and, uh, and these far more and more outlandish things that happen and escalate as all these little alien buddies on their play date gone wrong you know, wreak havoc through the countryside and the city. Uh, so there's a process of looking at text and l mapping it out over the course of 40 pages of a book. Do we want to read and go through a picture? Do we want to look at a picture and find our way to the words? What's that relationship? And if it's done right, uh, the person reading the book can't really remember what was written and what they got from the pictures, that it sort of becomes one experience. It's incredible to be able to create a story that both entertains the reader with your art, but as you've said, blending the, together, getting the point across, or mm -hmm. with the aliens specifically, having to stay with a play date instead of leaving abruptly, which I'm sure a lot of children like to do nowadays, which is a beautiful way to get that point across with your arts. So with your passion for art, we've also known that you are an art teacher. So what inspired you to both teach art to others along with creating art yourself? Uh, well, you know, part of the, the, the impetus to becoming an artist, uh, I think, is that, you know, creative people, I think, look at other creative people, and instead of thinking, like, I want to be a consumer, we look at it and think, like, I want to do that. Um, so other artists had such an impact on me wanting to be an artist. So the, the be, being an artist, you know, involves look, looking at art and thinking, like, I want to do that. I don't just want to consume that. I want to do that. And, and the same thing I realized happened when I went to study art, um, that, that, you know, being around people who could communicate what they were doing um, and knew so much about it beyond what they themselves were, were creating as artists, uh, you know, was, was an, an inspiring thing for me. Um, the good and the bad of it, those, those moments of thinking, I want to do that or I wish I could do that better. Uh, and, and, and as an educator, it gives you this opportunity to be in a room with 15 creative people who are sort of like past life regressions of me, I guess. <laughs> That's amazing, I'm sure. Everybody, all, all of your students are more than lucky to be able to learn from somebody so experienced for you to share your knowledge with them as well. That being said, what would you say is your favorite thing about being an art teacher? Uh, it really is that being in a room with 15 to 20 other creative people um, as, an, as an artist, we all kind of like, we all live under rocks. The, the, the work that is involved in this, however fun the end product is, is, is very sort of solitary and introspective. Uh, sometimes I don't even have music on in the background. My phone is definitely off. I'm not checking email. I'm in this other space. And then having to go teach that puts me on the other side of that, that now I'm dealing with other people and encouraging them to find that space, but I get to look at it from this sort of intellectual distance and, and see people who are capable of things that I'm not in many cases, to, to, to see the amount of different ways there are to solve the same problem and cast myself in a role to help 
all of those improve and find their way. What an incredible way to share your process with others. It's an incredible story. Thank you so much, Adam, for being on our show today. And thank you all for watching. We will be back next week with another episode of Garden State of the Arts.